I'm gonna teach you how to use Windows services in malware development. They can be used for stealth, persistence, network communication and many other things. Honestly, the sky is the limit here. But before we start writing any malware, let me tell you what services are and how they work. Windows services are background processes that are providing essential functionality for operating system and applications. They start automatically when system boots up and work independently of user logins. Some of them you might even know, like Windows Defender or Windows Update. If you want to see and manage all these services that are available on your machine, go to Services app and you will have this list of all the services available. By double clicking you can see its properties and uh, edit its service status. For example, you can start a service, stop a service, restart it and do all the management stuff. But to create the actual process, we are not gonna be using the services app. We're gonna use PowerShell. In fact, let's do it right now. Open up PowerShell as administrator and type with me new service. Let's give it a name of my new service. Next, you want to specify the binary path name, which is the path to the executable that is running the service. Uh, it's gonna be on my desktop. You don't have it yet. We will uh, create it in a second. Users uh, M Young Desktop and uh, it's called updater.exe, I believe. All right. Next, you want to specify the display name. It's gonna be my service. Next, description is gonna be this is just a test and the startup type, which is quite important because you want to specify either automatic, manual or disabled. And automatic basically means that once system boots, it will start the service automatically. Manual means that it requires a manual trigger from the user, for example. And disabled means that it will not start at all. So let's go with automatic and press enter. You can see that we have this message with indicates that the uh, service was created successfully. And now we can use sce.exe query and uh, type uh, my new service, which is our service name as the second parameter and press enter. And you will see the information about our new created service. So the state is stopped. It has uh, some other stuff. So you see that everything works but we don't have the updater.exe yet. So let's write some malware. The code starts with this payload. You can generate it with the command that you see on the screen right now. You can copy it from the description, of course. It is just a meterpreter reverse shell TCP shellcode. Uh, so there's nothing interesting here, to be honest. But in the main function, that's where things get a little more interesting. We are declaring service table array of type service table entry and it consists of two entries each have two parameters service name and service procedure service name uh, we pass here the name of the our service that's pretty obvious and the service procedure is the entry point function of our service and uh, as you can see we can start multiple services we can create multiple services within one code if we were to like, you know, do more entries. And the last entry needs to be filled with nulls. So our start service control dispatcher knows where this list ends. And this function is very essential because it connects the services in the service table that we create here with the service control manager. And this service control manager is a part of Windows that just manages services. Uh, so it's uh, pretty straightforward here. Okay, maybe not pretty straightforward, but um, I think you will you will get uh, what is going on here. And basically, uh, that's the main function. And the service main function is where all the magic happens. So first we use register service control handler function, which links our service with the control handler. And control handler is another function that handles requests like stop, uh, restart or start, all of these uh, things that you can uh, do to the service, this is what handles it. And this function is down below here, 
So, uh, every, by the way, everything is uh, on my GitHub link in the description. So if you want to just copy this code, modify it or uh, do something with it, you are welcome. Go to my GitHub and download the code from there. Uh, but back to uh, where we are, here we set the initial status, the current status, uh, sort of so those are the uh, all the values that you uh, want to pass here. Of course, there are more options uh, in the Windows uh, API documentation that you also have a link in the description. You can read about all of these parameters and various values that they can accept. So if you are curious what else you can do um, with these uh, services, with this all this setup, uh, then you are welcome to uh, go and look there. I don't want to make this video uh, too complicated. I want it just to be like an intro for you uh, so that you can do your own research uh, on the topic. But uh, moving on, we are setting the service status to, uh, to this and then we are doing the actual work. So uh, if you are watching my previous videos uh, about shellcode injection, for example, you might be already familiar with uh, this function so briefly we are allocating memory of size uh, of size of payload size of this payload uh, we are uh, we can refer to it as p buffer uh, then we are changing the uh, memory protection so that we can uh, execute and read and write from and to this memory then we are creating a new thread uh, and we are using, uh, so we are executing in the new thread what is inside this buffer and uh, wait for single object makes the uh, program wait for the thread to finish. Uh, all right, so that's it. That's the, uh, that's our service code basically. So let me show you how it works in action and what actually we can do with it. Okay, so once you open your Kali Linux machine, go to terminal, type msf console to open up the Metasploit framework. Now we want to use multi-handler to catch the uh, reverse shell. Type options, uh, options. Now we, you see that we need to set the L host to our IP, IP of the Kali Linux machine which is this one in my case. If you don't know what is your IP, then just type ifconfig and you will see it uh, here. All right, so uh, next we want to set payload to, uh, it was Windows x64 meterpreter reverse TCP. Now we want to set exit func to thread and we should be good to go right now. All right, so type run to start the listener and go back to PowerShell. You want to type sc.exe start and the name of the service, which is my new service. All right, now when you click enter, you can see that the state of the service changed to running and we got a shell. We got a connection back. So let's type shell, type who am I to verify that we actually have the access and sure enough, we are the most privileged user on the machine. Now be aware that I'm showing you only a bit of services potential and I want you to treat this video as a starting point. Remember that just watching a video will get you nowhere and practice is what matters. So do your own research, do your own projects and let me know in the comments because I'm very curious what you came up with. That's it for today. Thanks for watching and let me know in the comments if you want more malware development videos. Leave a like, subscribe and see you soon.